Good morning, everyone. I'm Farooq Shuku, and I'm going to be doing a presentation on cable ampacity. And uh, to begin the process, I guess uh, it's fair to say that cable ampacity is really consideration of thermal limits. Like any other device, uh, that thermal determines how much current you can put in that device. Cables are no excep exceptions, except uh, the conditions are uh, not determined solely by manufacturers or by tables. We have to do a lot of work to determine the actual uh, opacities or the approximate opacities that we can put in the cable based on the cable construction and the layers of the installation and, and uh, like armor or sheet and so on. The way the location of installation and the way it is installed, ambient temperature, uh, grouping effect, uh, other thermal sources that are in vicinity of the cables, and uh, of course, uh, we're not just talking about the fundamental current. We the harmonics would have different uh, uh, temperature rise in the cable. So, uh, how do we go about doing this? Uh, the methods are, uh, I guess we can say there are three methods essentially. One is actual thermal calculations, and uh, that's one of the methods that we're going to go through. One is uh, based on manufacturer base opacities and correction factors. And the third method is opacity tables by a standard. And we'll cover all three of them uh, during this process. The methods that are presented in ETAP, or available in ETAP, are, uh, are listed here, near my graph. Um, and IEC 60287, those two methods are based on thermal analysis. Then we have IEEE 399, uh, ICEA uh, P54440, uh, NEC, uh, BS standard 7671, and IEC 60364. And I'd like to cover all of these in half an hour, so let's see how fast we can cover them. Uh, on the thermal calculation, um, we have uh, both methods are for underground uh, dark banks and direct buried. And that is, I'm going to switch to ETAP actually right now and uh, bring up a dark bank. And for those of you who have not uh, worked with uh, dark bank, it's, uh, it can be in any shape um, uh, or any uh, um, um, format that you like to have it. I'm moving this cable over and uh, um, this cable, cable 2 that you see right here is actually a cable in the one line diagram. It's the same cable. If I double click on it, you're going to see the same editor that you double click on a cable from the one line diagram. The loading page determines how much current is flowing through this cable and, uh, and you, did, uh, you also can uh, select the actual loading of the cable uh, from, uh, from the operating current uh, which can also be from that comes from like load flow or it can be from actual measurements in the field from real-time data. Full load amp on equipment, uh, this cable is feeding a switch gear and the amp uh, rating of the switch gear is 225, so you can set, set it to that, or you can use your own ampacity as you like to define, user defined. So if I say, for example, 120 amps, that would be used for uh, for the uh, cable sizing of the for this cable. The uh, just to uh, show you this cable, I can delete it from here. Go to the one line diagram. And I can actually drag and drop this cable from here. I have to be in edit mode. I can drag, drag and drop this cable from here. I'm trying to drag and drop it. Here we go. And so you can see the same cable that it's, exists in the one line diagram is placed right here. Now, here we can, uh, on the, from the study case, 
I'm waiting for the, okay. Um, from the study case, you can see you can select near my graph or IEC 60287. And the process here, I can do temperature analysis. And as soon as I do temperature analysis, I can look at the temperature of the cables. And as you, uh, you can see, I can have extra external heat sources. So, for example, if I move the external heat source down here and do the cable and do the temperature analysis, and you can see uh, a lot of cables are over the limit now, the over 90 degrees limit uh, that is set right here. So, this is uh, essentially uh, you can do both uh, 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 both methods for analysis. Uh, the uh, I guess I'm done with uh, with uh, with terminal calculations. Uh, the layers, the cable layers uh, in 7.1, we have increased a lot of cable layers in the system, so it's a lot more uh, comprehensive as the type of cables we can handle for both of these methods uh, for terminal analysis. So I guess for underground cables, you can say this is the most comprehensive method of doing it. If I go to the ICEA 440. Uh, which is really for cable trays only. This method is not really a, a table format, although when you look at the standard, it, it looks like a table format, but it's a semi-thermal calculation. Uh, you don't have a base ampacity to calculate the, the derated ampacity. All the derated ampacity is actually calculated by this method. Uh, for this method, if I go to ETAB again, If I take the same cable too, now I'm going to, I'm not going to use thermal analysis. I can go right here and select the standard here on the page, uh, ampacity, select the uh, ICA uh, 440. And here, uh, the only option you have is uh, type is uh, above ground cable trays. I can put the height, let's say this is a 6 inch height. Uh, the width is 18 inches. And let's say it's 30 percent uh, fill. And as soon as I put this, the program calculates 453 amps as the current that I can put in this 750 kC mill cable. And uh, you can see that there is no reference to any base ampacity for this cable. So this is ICEA uh, 54440, uh, and uh, you can still have different type of uh, uh, trays and so on. Uh, we also have uh, additional um, uh, derating factors because of the fire protection. Uh, you can have uh, uh, fire coating, fire stop, and fire wraps. So if I go, for example, fire coating, I can select from the library. Uh, we only have flame master for fire coating. And if I put a one inch uh, uh, fire coating on there, you can see the derated ampacity drop to 390 amps automatically. You can also have fire wraps, additional uh, fire protection or fire stop when you're going through a wall. And uh, by doing uh, by doing that, the, the derated ampacity goes down as you as you do so. So this is uh, uh, the, the the concept on. Uh, I guess you can say that method is. Uh, uh, ICEA is semi-thermal. Now, the rest of the methods that we have in ETAP or the standards are really concept of derating factors. Uh, you take the base ampacity and multiply it by derating factor and you get the derated ampacity. The base ampacity could be data provided by the, by the manufacturer or it can be provided by the standard through tables. And I'll go through those as we move on. The derating factors, depending on the type of uh, installation that you have, would be uh, from uh, based on ambient temperature and conductor temperature or a standard for, for any installation, of course. But then depending if you install the cable above ground or underground, you have different derating factors. And we'll go through those as we go through different methods. The first method is IEEE 339, which is the Brown Book. Uh, now Brown Book, of course, is going to be published as uh, IEEE.